Hello friends, hope you are well. Welcome to Techman Pat. Today we're going to look at 5G again and what the future of a connected home could look like or rather what it could do to your health. Is it safe? And we're going to look at a report. As technology evolves, wires go wireless, devices connect to other devices that connect to other devices and so on. It creates a complex web of crosstalk and radio transmissions from high energy to low end to lots in between. And so with the introduction of the 5G spectrum, entertainment and data movement can happen a lot faster, backed by more power. With raised concerns against electromagnetic energy generated by 5G modems, what will that mean for us organics? This week, Total Radiation Services released an analysis of a 5G field apartment building and its radio frequency levels as part of the Smart Home Measurement Program. Now, by filling one entire building with over 50 5G and 4G devices, TRS, Telstra, and physicist Dr. Philip Knight hope to understand what extent RF and EMF are generated in a tightly packed sardine can like Meriton Suites in Southport, Queensland. And as always, I have linked the document below for your own detailed analysis. Today, we're gonna to go through some of the highlights of this 38 page report. Make sure you like this video if you did and subscribe if you'd like to see more and support this channel. Let's roll the intro. Let's start with some basic information. Exposure to sufficiently high levels of radio frequency and electromagnetic radiation can heat biological tissue and potentially cause tissue damage. Now, the amount of environmental RF EMR routinely encountered by the general public is too low to produce significant heating or increased body temperature. At low levels of exposure, the RF EMR, which is field intensified lower than those who would produce measurable heating, the evidence for production of harmful biological effects is ambiguous and unproven. The RF electromagnetic emissions from Wi-Fi and other wireless devices used for communications are regulated by the Australian Communication and Media Authority. Now, the Australian Radiation Protection and Nuclear Safety Agency Radiation Protection Standard has conducted a comprehensive measurement study of RF EME from Wi-Fi in 23 schools throughout Victoria and New South Wales. The study focused in on the measurement of the RF EME level resulting from the use of Wi-Fi networks in these schools and compared the levels against the public exposure limits in the Australian standard. All the measurements of Wi-Fi and other sources were much lower than the limits of the Australian standard. In the classroom, the typical RF EMF Wi-Fi was 0.000 2% of the general public exposure limit. These figures are out of the 100% allowable for general public exposure in the schoolyard and in the typical RF EME from Wi-Fi was 0.00001% of the limit. Now in the classroom, the Wi-Fi was similar to a radio broadcast, whereas in the schoolyard, Wi-Fi was lower than all other sources. Now this study showed that the typical RF exposure of children from Wi-Fi at school is very low and comparable or lower to other sources in the environment, such as radio and TV broadcasts and mobile phone based stations. Now our PANS's current advice is there is no established scientific evidence that the low exposure or RF EME from Wi-Fi adversely affects the health of children or the general population. Now, what about 5G? As you can see, this table contains the current reference levels for time average exposure to RMS electric and magnetic fields from the Arpanza. The tests were conducted within an apartment, roughly sized to 88 square meters, with living, dining, kitchen, media room, and two bathrooms, and two balconies, very premium living in Queensland. They placed eight Telstra 5G macro stations around the building at varying distances, with some stations not even visible from the apartment. The team was measuring three major aspects Firstly, the background EME levels of the 27 megahertz to 6 gigahertz band inside and outside the apartment with no devices inside the apartment connected. Secondly, the RF EME levels of the 27 megahertz to 6 gigahertz band in a family occupied apartment over an extended period. And thirdly, the RF EME levels due to individual devices. They also took three periods of time to record one minute long readings for each measurement query and area. Well, there's a lot of measurements, but Let's keep going. Now, in addition to the measurement of main living areas from mobile technologies and Wi-Fi, the team also measured individual devices from a distance of around 20 centimeters, and the results were pretty interesting. The highest average EME level was 0.813% of the Australian standard, and that was a baby monitor camera, and the device with the lowest EME level was 0.000009% 
for a smart light. Now there is a lot of painstaking information on how each measurement was taken, how it was conducted and what hardware was used to capture the result. If you're interested in all that, I highly suggest you have a read of the actual report. I'll put the link below. But for the purposes of this video, let's look into the results. As you can see, they have measured the RF EME for each connection type and device. What I would like to draw your attention to is that little blue line that says 10,000 times below the public safe limit. Now, unless that bar is set way too high and completely incorrect, we have to take these results at face value because that's the Australian standard. So over a four day period within a large four person modern living technology field apartment containing over 50 wireless devices that connect to Wi-Fi, 5G, 4G, the apartment did not generate enough RF EME to damage or harm an organic being at any distance. Now, even during an evening dinner party with some family and friends, the highest 5G EME levels happened during that time were 0.0149% of the Arpanza EME general public exposure limit. Then highest Wi-Fi EME levels also occurred during the dinner party and were 0.06% of the Arpanza EME general public exposure limit. My takeaway is that the FM and AM radio signals are generating more or less the same amount as RF EME as a house full of 50 devices using 5G constantly and much lower distances too. And this is still 10,000 times below the Australian Radiation Protection and Nuclear Safety Agency Radiation Protection Standard. Panza. So on that interesting result, thank you very much for watching my short summary. Hope this helped you get the gist of the report. And if you'd like more details, I have linked it below. Make sure you like this video if you did and subscribe to see more. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you all in another one. Bye.